the format of the robot. Pause Incorporated may be a generic name for many who haven't heard of the beloved comic book franchise Garfield. They were made around that thing, and if you said something about Pause Incorporated, people would relate to Garfield. The many specials and shows it would spawn were entertaining for many of all ages, and there have been a few games too. The main course is the lazy cat himself, Garfield, though there are other memorable characters too, including his owner John, dim-witted dog friend Odie, and love interest Arlene. The franchise had many revered actors voicing the cast of characters, with the late Lorenzo music being the defining voice for Garfield, although Frank Welker and Bill Murray both had good performances after music passed away. However, when media giant Nickelodeon picked up Pause and its properties in 2019, people had mixed reactions, mostly positive. I mean, it wasn't surprising. Garfield aired on Nick in the late 90s, and it has also been a staple on its sister channel CBS back when it had kid shows in the 80s and 90s. A similar thing happened to another comic franchise, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and their company Mirage Studios. Nick gobbled them up, and their companies became dormant shells of their former selves, without an explanation or single thought. Unlike Mirage however, Paws remained alive to produce comics and license the franchise, albeit under the wings of Nick and Viacom CBS, or Paramount if you like to call it now. Mirage had turtle graffiti in Northampton. Paws in Muncie didn't. Mirage had action figures, while Paws had plush toys. Both companies had special calendars featuring their characters, though Paws had more calendars than Mirage did. Mirage died, while Paws didn't. Garfield didn't have comic books, just strips, and Mirage never went for the newspaper's daily funnies. Mirage and Paws had so much in common, yet we never saw them duel it out for the more bucks. Yet Garfield didn't need to have graffiti or figures or graphic novels to be a success. So, why am I making this comparison now? While not as prominent as Mirage, Paws had certain points in their history that connected to their works. The live-action movies represent the maturity of the franchise and the potential it can bring. Garfield Gets Real pretty much focuses on Garfield wanting to be in the real world, representing Davis's vision of his franchise to the world. In the weeks prior to the acquaintance, supernatural events began to occur around the Paws HQ in Muncie, Indiana. They had two things in common with the events that happened with Mirage. One, both series lead to the acquaintances of the companies. And two, they happened ten years with each other, almost like a pattern. Many incidents happened in daytime, though some of them happened in the night as well. The Garfield windmill at the top of the building would spin violently, even though there wasn't any wind around at the time, and just when it looked like it was about to come off, it stopped. Then there were the strange graffiti drawings of Garfield and company on the building at random intervals, which was big since graffiti wasn't as popular as it was in Northampton. Shadows would appear on walls. Lights would randomly flicker, but the computers didn't turn off. One night in March 2019, Paws employees reported seeing a figure that resembled the Garfield mascot that walked around the studio, only he had a strange green glow and reddish pink eyes, kinda like those glow sticks you'd see in stores. There was no blood from what people could see. He was standing near a window. Nobody bothered to come close to Mikey in Northampton, but here the employees tried to walk towards Garfield to take him inside, seeing as though he had been standing there for hours, but when the employees got close to the window, he vanished. Much like the Mirage incidents, no deaths would be reported from this mishap. Numerous more sightings of Green Garfield had been circulating around the studio for a while, though there have been some reported around town. People would see him walking on the street opposite their sidewalk, while others see him fishing among other things. However, those who had lasagna would find it missing, while others would report other foods missing as well. Much like Kevin Eastman and his encounter with Mikey, Davis also had an unreleased interview stating he received a visit from Garfield in late summer, only it wasn't a dream. Davis was at his desk drawing the next Garfield strip, when along came what he thought was a Garfield mascot from the peripherals of his vision, until he turned his head to look at the figure. It was the green Garfield costume from before, only it was hard to recognize. The fur on the costume was lush and heavy, similar to a real cat's fur. 
The eyes were now glowing the reddish pink color. What was even stranger were the other details not before seen in the reports. Garfield had massive warts all over his body, clashing with his lush fur. His teeth were big and sharp, similar to a cheetah's. Davis was horrified by the sight, but Garfield assured that he was in good hands. Garfield told Davis that his franchise is becoming extremely massive and that he was being milked dry by the pigs over at the pig pen of Hollywood. You could say he told Davis to sell off the franchise to Nickelodeon, since film Roman was already in a massive bind with stars, Fox was too adult to accept a kid's character, and Cartoon Network was too heavily invested in the train wreck of Teen Titans Go. I guess you can say the rest was history. Davis sold paws to Nick, the land was cleared, and Garfield continued to remain a legendary franchise. You might think this is the end of the story, but due to the length of time between incidents, you could be wrong. What I am getting at here is that this is not a coincidence. There is a curse pattern occurring revolving around every small franchise purchase. Creators make franchise. Franchise gets major attention and popularity. Franchise eventually gets too big to handle. Supernatural beings come out based on said franchise. Said beings visit creators and tell them to sell off their hard-worked franchise before it rots and tells them where to sell it. Creators sell franchise and company a month or so later. Rinse and repeat. Based on this knowledge and the duration of the period between strings, it is predicted that Nickelodeon could purchase another major franchise or company in at least 2029, or they might do it earlier. This curse has all the time in the world, but it usually settles for 10 years. One thing is for certain however, the curse continues to thrive. It doesn't kill anyone. But it knows when a franchise is about to degrade in quality or such, and when that time comes, it will let you know. Even if you do sell it off, the entities will still be by your side, doing whatever it takes to keep your career at large. On a side note, it might be believed that Davis sold Paws off to lay off the burden of such a franchise on his back, so for the remainder of his life, he'd finally find a bit of peace. <laughs>